All right, everyone. So after a few comments there, I did see a couple of good ideas that we are going to try out with this bank to put words to action and to see how much more efficient we can draw down this bank based off of your recommendations. If you have any others that we want to try out, let me know down in the comments below on this video. Let's get going. Okay, first off, we are going to start by putting these, uh, checking the voltage across the batteries individually. They've been connected in parallel for several days now, so, this, so they should, be, should very much be balanced out, but we're going to double check the voltage really quick here. May need to top them off, so if I have to do that, I'll come back to you here in just a second. Okay, let's hook up this uh, voltmeter, see what we got. Battery number one is at 13.1. Battery number two is at 13.1. Well, 13.09. And battery number three is also at 13.1. Well, 13.09 on three. 13.09 on two. And 13.09 on battery number one. So they're all balanced out. And as such, I'm just going to go ahead and continue on with the testing at the current voltage of 13.09 to 13.1 volts DC. Still looking pretty good. So we're going to continue on. The first recommendation that was given to me here on the channel was to eliminate the bus entirely and go direct by taking all of the battery leads as you see here and take them through one connection point to the load input and to the inverter. I have done that and you'll see here that I got both the positive as well as the negative are all going through one connection point on the bus. The concern that was mentioned during the uh, chat or in the comment was that even that short amount of distance on the bus itself this uh, uh four inch distance is actually going to be could actually hurt the amperage coming off of the batteries particularly if the battery is on the far opposite end of the bus which makes sense so we are going to turn everything on let everything warm up for about 10 minutes and then we're going to do some amp checks to see what we look like amperage wise with all the batteries coming into one connection point and then that connection point going into the load. We'll be back in 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes my time for you. It'll be a click like this. 10 minutes later, we are back. We're going to start taking some amp readings here. Starting with the bank amperage, of course. One hundred fifteen point six, one hundred fifteen point seven amps on the bank for battery number one. Thirty eight point one, thirty eight point one amps on battery number one. Battery number two, 37.5, 37.6 actually, 37.6 amps. And battery number three, 38.1, 
38.1 amps. So in this configuration, where the batteries are all tied into one connection point and then the load is connected to that same connection point on the bus, basically eliminating the bus entirely. Here are the amp readings. Battery 1, 38.1. Battery 2, 37.6. Battery 3, 38.1. Pretty balanced. Pretty balanced. It's only a difference of a half an amp between battery 2 and battery 1 and 3. Only a half an amp difference. It's a very nice and balanced system. But is it the most ideal system? Or should I say, is this the most ideal wiring configuration? So... The second suggestion on the comments was to take the load and place the positive on the back side of a bus and the negative on the opposite side of the bus. So in this example, I'm going to put the positive of the load on this side of the bus and then I'm going to put the load on the front side of this bus. And supposedly this will allow a bit, a bit more bouncing across, across the buses. Now that being said, having a single connection point as we do currently looks pretty good with only a half an amp difference between the three batteries. So using a bus more traditionally, I, I guess if you want to call it that, using the bus more traditionally by distributing the battery leads across their individual lugs or individual boats I should say and then having the load being attached to opposite sides of the of the respective buses will that improve the amps across the three batteries we're going to find out I'm currently waiting for the inverter to cool down and then we're going to rewire everything and go from there Okay, batteries all wired up. Batteries, I should say, are all wired up, as you can see there. Load is wired up just the same. This is what I guess you could call your traditional <laughs> wiring of a bus. I mean, I don't know if combining cables to one post or one boat as you saw a few a couple minutes ago is appropriate or approved or whatever but i fear this is probably more approved <laughs> so anyway there is your positive load on the back side of the positive bus with the batteries in front of the load and here is the negative side of the load on the front side of this bus with the batteries behind it so let's turn this bad boy on here turn on the speed seater and we'll do this one more time we come back to you here in about 10 minutes once everything warms up and we'll do one more battery of test to see how this wiring configuration compares to the previous wiring configuration. It has been a little bit over 10 minutes since I turned on the load and the inverter and to allow everything to come to temperature or stabilize on draw and all that. So now we're going to start taking one more set of tests to see where we're at. As always, starting with the uh, bank load. 117.9. It's actually a little bit higher than it has been, but the inverter has been running a little bit longer. Battery number one. 38.8. Battery number two, 39.2, yeah, 39.2, it's bouncing closer to 0.2 than 0.1, so 39.2, and battery number three, 
38.1 38.1 amps on battery number three so with this wiring configuration there is a 1.1 amp difference across the bank battery one's at 38.8 battery two 39.2 battery three 38.1 with the uh, load coming across the bus, with the positive behind the banks more or less, and the negative in front of the banks on the buses. So a 1.1 amp difference. So while this configuration right here would be what you would consider the most traditional where everything's on its own dedicated boat it looks nice and neat on a schematic it is not nearly as efficient with a 1.1 amp difference compared to this configuration where all the batteries are tied into one single point on a bus or on a boat and then the load is attached to that same boat with this configuration, there is only a half an amp difference across the bus. And I surmise the reason why there is such a difference, you know, a 0.6 amp difference between this configuration compared to this configuration is the fact that we have resistance coming across the buses right here. Even though it may only be a half an amp, it is still a half an amp nonetheless. So if you want to be the most most resilient in, in energy usage or current sharing across these three batteries you would tie them all into one connection point and then that load is connected to the same connection point but as i said earlier is this even allowed <laughs> to where you can run multiple power banks multiple power sources into one connection point and then a load come off that same connection point. Is that even allowed? I mean, that's why they have buses, right? So yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about that. I was expecting this configuration to take more amperage because each of these wires and their lugs would in induce resistance. So you have your lug on your inverter cable and then your lug on your individual battery cables stacked on top of each other i fear that stacking that gapping whatever you want to call it would actually induce more resistance which would require additional amperage in order to drive that load but that is not the case in this scenario but i guess at the same token you would have the same situation here because you still have your surfaces from your individual lugs to contend with going onto one surface point for each of their connection points but then you have to deal with the actual bus itself's additional resistance so 1.1 amp difference on this configuration and a half an amp difference on this configuration but the, i guess the, if it's not a unless it's uh, prohibited or whatever which configuration would you go with for your battery banks that is the uh, project of setting up this uh, emergency power system to sustain my house during a uh, power outage for however amount of time it's required. Uh, if you didn't see my previous videos, I did a, I did a load test on my furnace a, a few weeks back, a couple, months, a couple months ago, to determine how long one single 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery can run my uh, my furnace in that video my amperage readings weren't correct because the previous amp meter wasn't reading dc amperage as i thought it was someone pointed that out to me on the chat thank you for that so that's why i picked up this new inverter or new inverter that's why i picked up this new amp meter from harbor freight ames electronics something that actually does measure dc amperage and as you can see with the numbers it's definitely doing the job but there you have it that is this video series uh, next up i'm going to be putting all this together into onto a cart 
And that's going to be my permanent uh, temporary solution whenever we have a power outage. But that's only the first project. Make sure to check out all the other videos on this channel. I do appreciate your support. I very much appreciate all the comments in the, uh, in the previous video. If you have any other tips or tricks or other suggestions in to improve a emergency power system, let, let me know or let us know down in the comments below. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.